a mid-century modern home. This view is fantastic. The lighting is great. You like it? Yeah, do you? This is good. <laughs> I'm very happy. Excuse me, is your name Simon? Yes, sir. It is you. Hi. We went to school together. This is my wife, Robin. This is, I didn't get your name. Gordon Mosley. Uh, Gordo. Gordo? Oh, my God. I'm so sorry to recognize you. It's been a very, very long time. Welcome home, smiley face Gordo. How do you think he got our address? That's an expensive bottle of wine. We should thank him. I believe that the bad things in life, they can be a gift. That guy's odd. He's a little socially awkward, but I can be like that. Gordo, hi. Hi. <laughs> After high school, and some people stay exactly the same. Thank you. He's delusional, thinks that we're friends. Thanks for a lovely dinner. Fish food. You don't find that a little troubling? <laughs> I said that I wanted fish. And all the visits when you're alone. They used to call him Gordo the Weirdo. I think he's nice, and he's been very generous. What you're talking about is a one-sided friendship. You're essentially being forced into a breakup. There's no easy way to say this. Don't visit us anymore. It's not over. Simon, after all these years, I was willing to let bygones be bygones. What does that mean? I do not know. But it must mean something. Hello? Bygones be bygones after all these years. What the hell was that? <laughs> that was big. Was that Gordo! What does bygones be bygones mean? It's over! Simon has a full file on him. You think he's been lying to you? Just tell me what happened. It was 25 years ago. I have no idea who you really are. Simon says, New house. Simon says, beautiful wife. Simon says, you think you're done with the past, but the past is not done with you. There better be one heck of a twist at the end of this movie, boy. I'm giving a lot of trailers today the benefit of the doubt. Uh, this, the D train, uh, saying, hey, you know what? Maybe there's more to the movie than the trailer shows. Uh, but they've got to step up their game when cutting these trailers, because right now this looks awfully generic. And I was like, ah, I can see why Rebecca Hall would make this movie, and I can see why Joel Edgerton would make this movie. Well, why would Jason Bateman make this movie? Why would he go the horror route? Uh, so I looked up the behind-the-camera talent here, and lo and behold, Joel Edgerton wrote and directed this movie. So I was like, ah, considering his, his history, you know, uh, his involvement with Animal Kingdom, that very well-regarded and prestigious film from Australia that put him on the map in the first place, I can see how he could talk Jason Bateman into doing this. Also, this is a, a Jason Blum a produced film, and perhaps Jason Blum called up Jason Bateman and said, hey, Jason to Jason, look what I did for Patrick Wilson's career. You want a little of that? You want a little of this? Uh, come on over to the horror side. Uh, but, you know, Patrick Wilson got really good properties. Uh, I don't think that seems to be the case here for poor old Jason Bateman, uh, who seems to have more misses than hits. Uh, you know, Patrick Wilson uh, had the Insidious films and The Conjuring. You know, James Wan was really the key to the success there. Also, Jason Blum has helped Ethan Hawke as well. But there, the, you know, Sinister was supposed to be a pretty... A uh, pretty good film, and that was a little more heightened in genre than this is. Uh, and then also, of course, he had The Purge, and The Purge was a really clever uh, original film that I actually liked quite a bit, and I like the sequel. I think that's a very good franchise. So I think that both those actors, who are more or less Jason Bateman's contemporaries, I wouldn't necessarily say peers, uh, but the contemporaries, uh, it's worked out for them because I think of the uniqueness of the projects. But this looks just so by the numbers, especially because I think the, the trailer's playing it too close to the vest. What makes this movie unique? What interested Joel Edgerton about wanting to tell this story? He's a busy man. He's busy making whitewashed movies about the Bible. He just can't make any old horror movie. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that Jason Bateman's character really did do something bad to old Gordo back in the day, but I don't have enough evidence to go on here to really make me compelled to, to see this. Uh, although I think it does raise interesting questions about the danger that one individual can pose to another. Uh, how safe are we really in today's society, uh, you know, when there's like digital 
digital access makes things so easy to get information. I mean, it's really terrifying. It's really, really uh, scary. And you know, but this movie doesn't seem to even be delving into this from from that perspective. So we'll see what happens. I guess I should have more faith in Joel Edgerton. He does come, you know, from a good, solid background. And I usually do enjoy Jason Bateman uh, films, even when they are misses. Uh, so perhaps that'll be the case here. But Rebecca Hall. I had to sit through Transcendence and uh, Closed Circuit, and those were two not particularly good movies at all. So this could be the third strike for her, at least in my book. So write your thoughts down below. I'm very curious to what you think of this trailer. Is it compelling enough to you? Uh, are you intrigued by the mystery that's presented here? Or do you agree this is a little too by the numbers? Not at the level of some of the other work coming out of uh, the House of Bloom. All right, write your thoughts down below, and you can check out some more episodes right now.